This is the Minis Forum AIX1, the little brother of the AIX1 Pro I showed you a few weeks back. It's got the right parts, Ryzen chip, Oculink, Radeon graphics. So on paper, it's impressive. In practice, let's see if it's a legit all-rounder or just another almost great. Let's see if it's actually worth your money. But first, unboxing. If you've seen the Pro versions unboxing, this one will feel familiar. Same minimalist, eco-friendly box, same no-nonsense vibe. Inside, you're greeted by the star of the show, the Minis Forum AI X1. Tucked inside what I only describe as paper burrito. Now, design-wise, this one isn't trying to be a Pro knockoff, it's more like the uh, AI X1 Pro and the UN1270 had a quiet fling. This would be the result. Gone are the Pro fancier extras. No co-pilot button, no fingerprint reader and no built-in PSU. Just a clean compact chassis with a metal top and a plastic underbelly that flexes if you look at it wrong. At the front we got two USB-A ports, a USB 4 Type-C, audio jack and a bonus clear CMOS pinhole for those who like to live dangerously. Around back, another USB 4 Type-C, this one supports power and display. HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 2.0, Oculink, but only if you sacrifice the second M2 slot, I explain in a minute, and Realtek 2.5G LAN. And one lonely USB 2.0 port just waiting to host your wired mouse from 2006. For wireless, it's rocking a MediaTek Wi Fi 7 chip, futuristic on paper, but we'll see later. Bluetooth range could use some gym time. Digging further into the box, you get the usual suspect a basic quick start guide and warranty sheet a short 1m HDMI cable and a compact 120W power brick. I got the UK plug, but yours will match your region. There's also a VESA mount with screws if you're the wall mounting type. And took inside the little black box is the Oculink adapter. Nice touch, no clutter, just essentials. Next up, we crack it open, slot in the Oculink and see what kind of internals this thing is hiding. Opening this thing, finally painless, no rubber feet hiding screws, no hit gun rituals, just four Phillips screws and you're in. The lid is attached with two cables, though so don't rip it open like it owes you money. Unplug the fan from the lid before flipping it over. Inside, it's surprisingly tidy. We've got two crucial 32 gigs DDR5 sticks for a hefty 64 gigs total. More than enough for most workflows, whether you're editing, gaming or spinning over virtual machines. There's also a 1TB Kingston Gen 4 SSD in the main M2 slot. Solid, but if you're planning a massive project or game library, swapping it for something beefier is easy. Slot 2, technically available, but you'll have to give it up if you plan to use Oculink, which we're about to do. So here's the move, drop in the included Oculink adapter. There's a screw hole already waiting, slide the connector into its slot through the plastic frame. Yes, it takes a little finesse and tighten it down, boom, done. Now let's seal it up, tighten the screws and power this thing on. We'll stress test the Oculink eGPU connection in just a minute, so stick around. The star here is the AMD Ryzen 7 H225, an 8-core, 16-thread chip with integrated Radeon 780M graphics. It's basically a rebranded H745HS with a new name and no real surprises. Paired with 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM and 1TB Gen 4 SSD, you're looking at serious multitasking power. In Signbench and Geekbench, it lands just behind the Minis Forum UM870, not by much, but enough to note. For connectivity, you've got Wi-Fi 7, as I said before, and Bluetooth 4.5, courtesy of MediaTek. Wi-Fi speeds? Excellent. Bluetooth range? Not so much. Anything over 3 meters and your controller might start ghosting. That's a bit of a step back from the X1 Pro and worth knowing before you set this up across the room. Now, let's talk heat. 
I broke out the thermal cam and checked the exhaust. Hot air exit mainly through the back, averaging 42 to 45 degrees Celsius on the load. Nothing scary, but don't shove it into a closet shelf. At idle, power draw sips just 7 watts. On the full load, it peaks around 100 to 107 watts in performance mode. That's efficient and you won't need to worry about your energy bill spiking. Noise idle stays whisper quiet at around 32 decibels and even under pressure we're hovering around 38 to 40 decibels. That's a quiet library territory. Not silent but never distracting. Minus Forum has clearly put in the work here. Honestly they might be the best in the game when it comes to cooling compact systems. Other brands should be taking notes. Let's talk gaming because Yes, this tiny box can actually play stuff. On its own, the Radeon 780M iGPU handles S-Port and lighter AAA titles surprisingly well. Forza Horizon 5 ran at 84K, smooth as butter. Locked 60fps average, no FSR, no tweaks, that's a win. Grand Theft Auto 5 Enhanced Edition, also at 4K, closer to 30fps without upscaling. Still playable, lowest settings, and honestly, better than I expected. AMD Adrenaline's upscaling and fake frame generation, it tries, but sometimes just makes things worse. Bit of a coin toss there. Emulation is where this system really cruises. GameCube classics via Dolphin run flawlessly. Mario Kart, Need for Speed, all at full speed. No sweat here, but let's be honest, even weaker machines can handle that. I also threw Robocop Rogue City at it. Medium settings hovering between 41 and 54 FPS. Pretty impressive for an iGPU, but if you want to push it harder, let's talk upgrades. I connected one of the cheapest Oculink based eGPU I could find, the Boss Game GVP7600, hooked it up, installed drivers and boom massive leap in performance. Everything that used to stutter along at low graphics and a sad joke 60fps, well not anymore, with the eGPU connected via Oculink, Forza Horizon 5 is now flying at high setting, 138 to around 170fps, no drama, smooth and sharp. I agree, eGPU is an extra cost, but honestly, it makes more sense than dropping big money on a fully loaded desktop. With a powerful mini PC plus external GPU, you upgrade piece by piece, and when it's time to move on, just sell whichever part you want. Try doing that with a chunky custom rig. So mini PC plus Oculink eGPU equals perfect match. Let me know in the comments, I'm curious. If you're a solo creator, editor or YouTuber, this thing punches above its weight. I ran stress test with audio latency under load, no hiccups. DaVinci Resolve, CapCut and even timeline scrubbing in 4K, smooth. The 64 gigs of RAM absolutely helps here. It means previewing and basic cuts feel snappy even on heavier timelines. Rendering in 4K is where the Radeon 780M really shows up. Its hardware encoder actually competes with the mid-range GPUs. Compared to my iMac M1, exports were only slightly slower and that's impressive for a mini PC with no dedicated GPU. Of course, when you start piling on heavy filters, transitions or advanced color grading, the iGPU starts to sweat. That's where an eGPU like the RX 7600M I just tested can supercharge your workflow. The combo of this CPU and a discrete GPU via Oculink, chef's kiss. Perfect for creators on a budget who still want pro level output. Built-in mic and speakers are functional but flat. They're okay for voice assistance and basic calls, but nothing more. Windows Copilot integration is present, but there's no dedicated button like the Pro model. AI functions are basic unless you bring your own models. So who is this for? If you're a student and want something compact, fast and future-proofish, or if you're a casual gamer dipping into esports, emulators or just one more GTA 5 run, or you're a budget conscious creator editing 4K on CapCut or Resolve, or if you're an AI curious and wants to locally run models without nuking your laptop, 
then yes, this checks a lot of boxes. And if you already have or plan to grab an eGPU, this thing becomes a monster. Plug in some Oculink magic and you're not just browsing Reddit or editing TikToks, you're breathing fire. So the AI X1H255 might just be the sleeper hit of the mini PC world. Is it perfect? No. Is it interesting, powerful and expandable without hitting four figures? Absolutely. So bottom line, this is one of the best value mini PCs under $600 US right now, especially for those who want freedom to expand, to game and to create. Agree, disagree, drop your hot takes in the comments. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. I know you want to. Family Pop TV